slide here. I'm kind of nervous about talking, but we're back in here in the same area that we've been hunting. I'm going to hunt it until we either get one or we've completely run them out of here, but I don't think we're going to run them out of here. It doesn't matter what we do. This is definitely where the bucks are. Today, Ted and I are creeping down the edge of this clear cut. We're just in the inside of it.
This is where the acorns are dropping. This is where I'm going to sit. Uh, Joe's going to wrap all the way around and get into a funnel up ahead. And uh, I think uh, Joe's in a kill position. Good chance to get into here though, too, because this is where all the acorns are dropping. Um, There's a lot of them. As you can hear in the background. Yep. Um, this is the main buck trail coming down here, but I'm hoping some are dropping from the top. I'm going to just ease up into the middle of these acorns and see what happens. I think you'll be in it. I think we both have a solid chance of having a rack in front of us, so. I'll go get them. All right, good luck. All right. So I just got set up on this point here. Um, like we said, Dan is over there in the acorns. I'm over here on this side of the point where we're hoping the bucks will kind of circle around down. Um, I know Dan keep mentioning that he thought this looked better, but boy, it's 50-50. There's a little less sign over here, but it would make more sense for them to cruise this edge and work their way that way. The rub line kind of shows that, but he's it's tore up over there compared to here. Um, I got the big scrape down here. So I think we're both sitting pretty good. It's 1, 1.30, so we're in here really early. It's going to get cool in the pines, so we'll see what happens. Well, I didn't expect that. This dude walked through in front of where the deer should come for both Dan and I with a dog. I don't know, I didn't look close if it was a muzzle loader or a rifle or what he's doing. And he dropped down in the draw right where I'm hoping the deer are going to come up. I also hope they're going to come off the top of the hill and drop down. It's possible that could still happen, but now you've got a line of scent that the deer have to cross. I whistled at him to let him know where I was, and he just kept coming, so I don't know. You know you're at a permanent site when it's got, when the, most of the campers have people living in them and there's moss on them. <laughs> <laughs> we went back to camp today, which is the first time that we've done that. Shot the bow a little bit, took a shower for the first time, and. Y'all don't even know, want to know how long, but feeling pretty good about it. Gonna get, probably gonna get a little bit more aggressive tonight. We were gonna go up in the way that we came in this morning, but we're gonna try to circle up and around them and get the wind more in our favor. Try that and then just keep inching in from there. Should be fun, gonna be more, around some more oaks, I think. So I think that'll be good for us. Going back in for this afternoon. Right here's this ridge that we've been hunting. On this side, there's more oak timber. On this side, there's select cut with oaks in it. It's the same area that we've been hunting. This morning, we were kind of down on a logging road. Thought we might have heard a deer, saw some fresh tracks, but we know there's a big buck in here. We're just gonna keep hunting until it works out or the sign dries up. But every day we go back in and find more fresh, really big buck sign, so we know we're right on them somewhere. It's just a matter of time. The reason we're circling around the ridge and instead of hunting up here this afternoon is because we got a wind coming this way. We think we're going to be able to circle around the deer, kind of stand in the low ground, then come up the ridge and get set up somewhere up there where we feel like the deer are kind of coming out of the clear cut going into the hard hardwoods where the oaks are dropping acorns. You know, we know that there's good sign up to a a certain point but we're going to push in a little bit further. Pretty excited. I feel like there might be some good movement. We got a front moving in tomorrow morning. Like basically from here on out. At this point in the day from now till I don't know probably the end of tomorrow the temperature is just going to be going down. So hopefully that stirs things up. It's hot now but pretty breezy. Maybe the deer can sense it. They're going to be moving. I don't know. In theory. Either way we're hunting them. Let's do it. So 
so I sprinted up here. Um, that guy came through with his dog and he dropped down into the ravine or the draw where I was expecting the deer to come up out of. And suddenly I heard four gunshots. So I went over, looked, he shot some ducks and I talked to him and I got him to circle back out behind me. But then I had to run a hundred yards forward to get over his scent and his dog scent. Um, I still don't believe that there's a lot of pressure in here, that these deer are all cagey from human pressure based on the way those does acted this morning. Um, but that guy, when he, he said, he told me, he said he knew there were ducks over there, so he was going to go shoot them. So I don't know if he does that a lot and the deer deal with some human scent or what the deal is, but I move forward quite a bit and it, it's kind of flat all the way and then it goes up, but you still have kind of a draw over here that he didn't mess with. So I don't know if the gunshots are gonna, my belief is a big mature buck's not gonna get up and come down here anymore um, with those gunshots, but maybe something else will, so we'll see. Felt good about this sit, but that really kinda throws a wrench into it, but who knows, Michigan worked last year kinda the same way. We didn't have gunshots, but we'll see what happens. He's no giant, but he gets the heart racing. Probably a good thing if I wouldn't have moved forward this thing. I don't know. I think it would have went right between me and Dan. I think it would have ended up by one of us eventually, but that was fun. That was cool. We'll sit and let Dan finish, uh, finish his hunt and uh, maybe film a big one come down the ridge here. I'd love to watch a big one go right past me and hear him whack it. That'd be cool. Noticed on the way up, there was a truck parked over on the private. Kind of had a, a suspicion that that might be the case. It's Friday night, people are out and about. It's like the Saturday of PA. Basically, we're back down at the bottom. That guy back up on the top, and we're just gonna go down at the other end of the ridge and just work the side hill. Just try to see what's going on back in this thing. There's still fresh sign. I mean, that scrape when I was at it last was not that open so they're here just gotta hope to bump into something here i think the nice thing is we got wind wind should be coming this way i'm sure it's gonna whip around some but see as that sun starts to set on the back side of that ridge it'll really die and hopefully drop this way more 
that's the hope. We're gonna be able to sneak down these roads quiet. We've been doing it and not spooking any deer, but we're gonna actually try to get up where we think the deer are now. Let's get aggressive. Just go to, I think, just try to get to the end of that ridge.
hill and bed it down and he's been there for the last 30 minutes. It's 30, I mean it's the last few minutes of life, but he's three yards. Right there. Oh my god. Did he crash right there? I think he did.
I got, I got, I need your guys' opinion on a lot of things, but there's a start. It was like the first few yards, you yeah. know, fixed blade, whatever. You're not getting a lot of blood, usually right on impact. And we were started, and it first few drops, and then like immediately it was just like started going, going, and then we found that. Yeah. And this is what 40 yards down. Yeah. And then it just went blood everywhere. Really? I'm talking, I'm talking like the elk I shot right here. Yeah. I was gonna say, you think you it shot? Looked similar. You, think you cut his windpipe. Do you have any idea like where you hit him through the video, or is it no just idea. too hard to it's tell? It's too hard to tell. What'd you go and do, Joe? Mm hmm. What'd you go and do? I uh, put a hurting on one. All right. <laughs> How far we got to go in here? Uh, it's not terrible. So 600 yards. I would say 600 not yards. Not one of these three and a half mile deals, huh? Nope. Right by the parking lot. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Let's go get him. Let's go get him. That's all right, huh? There's just rows of them all through here, dude. All following the ridge. Really? Yeah. And some really big rubs. Bedding up top. It looks like they're coming off of there. The one that came to me came off of there. Yep. The point. One that came to you come from there. Yep. Because it's fairly flat, and that just steps right up, really yeah. steep. And I was, I was right up here, and uh, the dog guy came through in front of me, and I figured, with the guy and the dog, those two different lines of scent, it's going to be hard for the deer to get past me. So I moved beyond where um, his scent line was. That way, I could get to the deer before they smelled us. There he is. How about that, huh? <laughs> Pretty slick, wide as his ears. Yeah. Heck yeah. Feeling beastie, eh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good time. I love it. Perfect shot. Yep. You know, kind of redeemed myself from the other night with that one that I shot a mile in front of. Feels good to kind of get it done the right way. You guys found this spot today, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems like a week ago. We've been pounding so hard. <laughs> Yeah, when he came down the ridge, I just saw this, and I'm like, please have brows, please have brows. <laughs> and you can see in the video, I was glassing the heck out of him. The camera wasn't on him, and I was just trying, and he finally turned, and I saw these. I'm like, that'll work. So, Yeah, great shot, too. How far was he? 30 yards. Perfect. Yeah, it was, I actually got that uh, the Trophy Ridge uh, hot, wi hot Wire. Is that what it's called? That's it. The Hot Wire site. And uh, I've never done three pins, but I had all those problems in the past with the one pin and moving it. And it was kind of nice. I looked at him. You could tell it was 30 yards. And I put the second pin on him and hit it right where I was aiming. Sweet. So Good maybe deal, I like the three pins. I'm still trying to figure that out yet. Where I was, there was a big patch of acorns that you could shoot the whole patch. And uh, really everything else in here is pretty much pine. And uh, we followed the rub line around to over here, wrapping around the corner. And uh, well, actually down further until that guy bothered you and he mm -hmm. moved. Yeah. But uh, it was Joe's turn. Joe wanted this spot and so did I, but Joe got it. <laughs> <laughs> but I probably wouldn't have moved, so I probably wouldn't have got it. But I went back and took the acorns in case anything came down. And uh, then we had this guy come through shooting. I was wondering if Joe got shot because I heard gunshots right underneath him. Yeah. I mean, because we're pretty close. Yeah. It sounded like it was right at you. Yeah, it was 80 to 100 yards within. It was duck hunting, I guess. He came out with two ducks, so. So you had to, you had <laughs> to shift out. over yep. here. Yep. Because my idea was you have, the, um, you have the guy and his dog walking through two different lines of scent, a lot of scent, the dog zigzagging back and forth, and it would be hard for a deer to want to cross that and get to me so i wanted to at least get in front of that line of scent um yeah. so that the deer could get to me without freaking out adapting to the situation mm -hmm. right. got to do a lot of that especially on heavily pressured stuff yeah that's what it says no putting it on the antlers got him out huh yep dan said he's dragging <laughs> Big splinter. I was thinking like a Wisconsin splinter. It's not bad. Yeah. All you have to do is get it about there and let go. Yeah. Who's <laughs> just gonna take off? Matter of fact, we could all ride on him. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder how I lost my knife. Oh. <laughs> Those lights are gonna turn off on your truck, Zach. Uh, they either will or they won't. Okay. I know it'll help if I check the driver door.
since we shot we got as you can tell the whole crew which is really awesome I'm really happy that you know got good friends to come help but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling nervous because we don't know uh, what exactly happened we got rain coming and that's why we're here it's warm just gonna go show everybody the blood and kind of get opinions and then just go you know a few of us up ahead just go real slow yeah, that's the key, it's just listening. As you can tell, it's real quiet. So if anything moves, we can hear it. I mean, we definitely heard a deer move off earlier. We're not sure what happened. It could have been a totally different deer. It could have been the buck, but it seems hard to believe with as much blood as he was losing. But we can get everybody's opinion and go from there. Everybody feels pretty confident, so. Still gotta climb up this hill and see at the spot of the shot. Yep. Oh. Wanna get up. Rain. 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 It's right there. <laughs> Maybe we just try to move here. I do feel it. I, I honestly walked up here and I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were just gone and I wouldn't blame them either. <laughs> now we just yeah, hang all evening. <laughs> that is yeah, cool. No brows. Awesome. no brows. No brows. No brows. That's wild. No, no, a pointer. 
Yeah. yeah. That's the wildest eight pointer you might ever kill, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah, that no is bra. wild. What? We gotta find out what in the heck it hit. It looked like it hit about right where. I mean, I guess probably just slightly to the left, huh? See the entry? That's the entry right there. Find the exit. exit. Maybe right there. Yep, that's where it came out. So it's on that. It just went left side. Yeah, mm -hmm. right down the left side. That's probably what it happened. Is you got one lung liver. Yeah. Like clipped the back, the side of the liver, and clipped the side of the lung. Oh, he must be Shredder. He wore his brow tines on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has to. That's the buck that I saw yesterday. The other day. You yeah. sure? Uh huh. Pretty sure. Huh. I wouldn't awesome. know for sure, but it's a sweet buck. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. I mean, yeah. I'll take that all the time in in Pennsylvania. Look at all these old rubs right here. Oh yeah, pretty sweet. And it's just a matter of probably like in two inches. Yeah, that's the thing with that frontal on a deer is like you got about you're shooting about a baseball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so close though. I mean. You don't really practice for three yards. <laughs> I actually was shooting today at camp. I shot at like 10. Sure. I didn't shoot at three. No. <laughs> Nobody ever shoots at three unless no. you're paper tuning. I think the bottom line is almost no one has a lot of experience shooting at a frontal way till at three yards yeah, on the ground. You know, three three <laughs> yards. Yeah. That's not something that happens often. I just think, yeah, the I'm, three yards part is the, you know, if it was like, it was like yeah 10 or 15 so <laughs> that's it that's a northeast deer short times no broad things i i feel like we read comments all the time talking about people saying you know you come to pa or michigan it's like small bucks and a lot of pressure and it's like you know, it's not about how big the buck is no it's about the experience think, i don't think a lot of that's necessarily true either yeah i mean with as much big sign as we found and you know the people the locals that we've talked to like there's plenty of places for them to get old mm -hmm. and there's plenty of deer around too i mean it's just it's pretty dangerous driving around at night around here honestly mm -hmm. <laughs> put that head up and i was like yep good enough for me <laughs> awesome. gotta get closer though <laughs> 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 i've been talking about for a long time wanting to shoot something real close we, before we left, that's what you said to me. Shoot him inside of 10 yards, it's cooler. And then you drove off. <laughs> it's true. I don't know if you can get much closer than that. No, uh, yeah, it would, it would just get freaky if it was. I mean, it was freaky at that close. It's crazy. Good deal. Well, let's get out of the rain. You guys cool with that? Yeah. All right. I think we're probably gonna wrap this video up at this point, wouldn't you say? Well, we're gonna go back to camp. It's early in the morning now, so we're gonna go back, wish everybody luck as they take off for the morning hunt, and uh, we're gonna go to sleep. So, thanks for watching. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate all the help from everybody. See what those guys see tomorrow. Should be good weather. This front should be pushing through, and then the temperature's dropping all day, so hopefully, we got a little bit more action to show you. We'll see you back at camp. So this is where we were hunting when we saw all those uh, bucks earlier in the week. And now that uh, youth season uh, has come in, look at all these cars and guys down there. Now that's what I call pressure. That's pressure. So in my book, I think those guys are dropping on the river bottom, hunting around that river bottom where all the sign is. But those bucks are coming from up top. So for a last ditch effort, me and Joe are gonna drop in further back, try to drop through that river bottom and up a couple shelves and get to where we think those deer are coming from. And we're gonna go in there kind of blind and just figure something out. And Basically where I missed that one the other day, but I think I was a little too high, a little higher than I needed to be. Just get a little further over. Yep. Get into the oaks. I think we'll do okay, but you never know where those guys went. But I don't think most of them are, are going to go that far. Right.
you know. But it's amazing the pressure, how oh, it just changes overnight, like a snap of a finger. A lot of guys in there. We came at a weird time of the year with all the different seasons starting. Yeah. Another guy. Here he comes. Do you have a shot? Here he comes. Let him get close. I think he got our wind. What is that back of my neck? Oh, shoot. That was a close one, man. Did you see the size of that thing? Yeah, dude, I had a couple more steps I took a shot. You... Oh, cool. What did... What... We almost pulled a zap. <laughs> How far was he? He was about 40 yards. Really? And you didn't have a shot? No, he was right behind a bush. He was just waiting for him to step off. No. Dude, our wind is not going at him. There he goes up that ridge. Holy smokes, did you see the size of that thing? Yep. Yeah. Holy smokes. Let's give it, he's on that hillside there. Give it some time. So we slipped in here, we went a little over. Uh, when Joe was up high, he saw some bucks down in this area. There ain't a lot of sign, but it's like where all the deer would have to funnel if they're up here. It's the right terrain. We were getting up here. We jumped a couple deer. One of them looked like it had a rack and they ran into here. And we went real slow, a little further up. And then Joe says, hey, hold on. There's, there's a buck. And I stopped and then uh, Joe said, it's a good one. So we crawled up to some cover and got ready and we called. Joe snort wheezed and I grunted. And he turned around and started marching right in. And uh, man, I was just about to launch an arrow, one more step and he'd have cleared the brush. I mean, really, literally. You full draw? Yeah, I was just I was ready to drop it right there. And uh, just a, a little swirl, and he caught our wind, and he was out of there. But uh, uh, it looked like a, a big old buck, but I, I really never got a real good look at the rack. I, it looked like he was wide. What did you think, Joe? Yeah, oh, yeah. He, yeah. Was, he was like an inch or two inches outside of the ears on each side. I know well he was a shooter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Looked mature, but uh, that was really close to him getting an arrow. Um, 
but we think we might have split him from the doe, so maybe he comes back at last light, but uh, there's a lot of bucks up here. But just goes to show you that you can go right past all that pressure, and the deer are still living here. It's just they're not where the people are hunting. We just went beyond them, and here's a mature buck. And uh, today's our last day, but I think if I had another week, we'd kill that thing. We'd hunt him down. He's living here. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap for the Public Land Challenge. Year three. Yeah. Yeah. Went pretty well, I think. What, I think it was did, a blast. And it, Pennsylvania was kind of cool. I was really impressed with the deer numbers. That was one thing that stuck out to me. Like, as far as an expectation going in, I was like, figured we'd struggle to find deer and sign, but everybody was in good sign. Seemed like action mm -hmm. was pretty good. Um, you know, at least as good as past years, so can't complain there. Yeah, I saw um, kind of spotty action. Like like when you were in them, you are in all of them. Mm -hmm. But you could go a lot of miles and not run into sign. Yeah. You know, but it seemed like uh, once you hit it, you had good action. Yeah, that was my experience as well. It was like we would hit a lot of stuff that just wasn't holding deer, but then you'd find that right, the right pocket. And it seemed, it seemed to me like the clear cut was everything. If you had some cut... And then obviously oaks were a huge factor in the area that I was hunting, but you know, depending on where you were and what piece of public you were hunting, it was like pretty variable it seemed. But I look forward to hunting Pennsylvania again in the future. It's a cool state, a lot of opportunity. That's the that's part for me. It's like there's public everywhere. Yeah, so it's actually can... it's actually hard for me to leave. I mean <laughs> I, I had a good day today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a heck of a buck for like for the day that you gotta leave, that kinda yeah. You know, makes it a little bit tough to leave, I'm sure. But appreciate everybody watching. You know, we we really enjoy doing this. We appreciate all the support. You know, if you guys haven't, obviously check out the Hunting Beast channel. They got a bunch of awesome information, very helpful stuff. I know I've learned a ton from Dan and the guys there. So always cool opportunity to get together and go hunting. And, you know, it's always a blast to share camp with these guys. So thanks for coming out. And thanks, well, thanks for, for having us. Yeah, man. for sure. Thanks for watching, everybody. Public Land Challenge Year 3 in the books. See ya.